Thank you for coming. Thank you for joining me today on stage. So, you, so you've heard a lot about AI, technology, digital, cloud banking. I think I, have, I haven't heard in one day so many mentions about technology that I don't fully understand. <laughs> I must recognize. So, but uh, let's go back to the basics, to the consumer. Do consumers still watch commercials and most important banking commercial, financial commercials? And the question is for both of you. I think consumers um, watch topics. They don't watch commercials. They, they watch what uh, is interesting and what is uh, relevant for them. And if uh, we are just uh, there in the advertising break to sell uh, them products, they are not necessarily going to listen. So, um, but what I see as uh, encouraging in the, I was talking to um, Costin uh, earlier, that uh, what I see as a positive note in the financial uh, uh, advertising break is that uh, we are addressing more and more important topics. People want to know how money works. People want to make money work for them. People don't necessarily feel educated and it's a friction point because money actually means more than money. It's their life. It's their life safety. It's uh, the future of their kids. It's uh, the everyday that they need to cover. So um, talking more in the advertising break about financial advisory and previously about financial education, uh, I think it's very meaningful for consumers and I think it's a topic that needs to be addressed. We both were talking that it's very hard to talk about money. Money are a taboo. We, yeah. we don't talk it even in the workplace. We, we, it's something that we don't address. And Sometimes uh, we don't even talk in the couple. Uh, in the family, I was, we were discussing, yeah, uh, we were discussing night, about yes. uh, this uh, last night. That, uh, and I think uh, it's not only in the advertising break, but I, th I think it's very important to mention that brands are taking this subject full on. That, but it's a subject that be becomes uh, relevant in the culture. And uh, it's very apparent that it's uh, important in the culture because Netflix already has three shows addressing financial advisory uh, from different angles. Uh, money psychology or purely financial advisory for uh, everyday uh, Joes. If you look at uh, financial advisory podcasts, they are uh, at all time high. So, uh, and I, this is where we didn't agree necessarily, but, but I would uh, go to that uh, extent to say that the financial advisory have the potential, uh, the, the financial advisors have the potential to become the new, let's say, star chefs uh, on TV. So uh, it's no, because we, it's... We, we, like, <laughs> now that I'm looking in the room, like I, I can see like some uh, potential uh, rock stars here. So, no. Yes, I think money is a very, very important conversation people need to have and they need to feel closer uh, to, to this topic. And they want, what, what I think it's also important is that they want to feel... Uh, confident and educated when they talk about money. And this is where we can fill this gap. To, uh, to open honest conversation about money, to become helpful in, uh, in the services that we are providing and not just sell products. And I, see, I think there is a good path that we are on, but it, only if we approach it honestly. So don't use financial advisory to upsell, but actually help people figure out how to become financially uh, healthy and thrive. Yeah, that was uh, that was a complex answer. I don't know if I have anything <laughs> else to say. Um, I, I think people don't watch banking commercials, or, or they, they're not they're not watching commercials. In the if we're looking at commercials as we used to look like in the traditional sense of commercial, like they uh, commercials are what interrupts their film or whatever they're looking where the uh, match they're watching, so they, they probably don't really they don't really like commercials. But if we're interrupting, if there's if we're stealing that time from from them, at least we can be we can be relevant. 
we can uh, make them laugh, cry, I don't know, shed a tear, do something. So we kind of pay back, so we go back to a transaction. We pay back for, for the time we're taking away from them to, uh, to, to bring our commercial. And on the other hand, if we're not looking at uh, uh, you know, advertising or communication for uh, banks and financial institutions in the traditional way, I think banks are coming and financial institutions are bringing up solutions to the table right now, and the th line between advertising and like branding and the solutions we're bringing to the table, it's uh, becoming more thinner and they're intertwined. So it's not just what you put on TV, but also the service that you're coming with. Uh, with. And you you no longer know um, how it came up. If, if, if you're bringing up a service, the service also works as a piece of advertising, as a piece of branding, the service you're bringing there, the utility that you're bringing. Just look at uh, you know, uh, mobile banking apps. They, they are you know, branding devices in a sense. Yeah, and I liked what was uh, being uh, said on the stage earlier by um, uh, ING, that they are developing uh, services, uh, not products, but services for uh, certain uh, niche uh, target. And uh, this is something that I uh, actually encourage because more and more banking needs personalization. People need tailor-made solutions, and you cannot approach a teenager, because it was about teenagers, uh, the example I'm uh, talking about, you cannot approach teenagers and the financial topic in the same way you approach, for example, seniors and the financial topic. So I think, um, I think this is uh, a conversation that we need to have, that we need to talk about people and life stages more and more, and not made up people uh, that we usually see in segmentation that actually don't exist. And uh, um, we need to talk about the real problems, what people, why people are, uh, do, why do they have anxiety when it comes to money? I recently looked at a research, uh, a global research, that places uh, money uh, at second uh, uh, reason for anxiety globally. First being the war, uh, obviously, due to the context, but uh, I, I would take that as a fountain of problems we can totally solve with uh, with what to do what we do every day and not just communication because com communication always comes after you figure it out after you find how you can be useful you know um, so I, I'm very much with the uh, question that utility should be at the heart of what we do and then obviously communication should tell a story should and there is something positive, though, in the advertising break. I, I had to admit, I looked uh, at, the, at how beer brands communicate right now, and I looked at how financial brands communicate right now in, in Romania. And uh, I was so, uh, so surprised to see that uh, banks tell stories better. They, uh, they talk about life easier they uh, take us on board faster and they actually try to be more useful yeah definitely definitely they they do a better job so that's congrats to everyone in the room who does who does this you do a better job than beers which is kind of weird it's when weird you, that's beer why I should said it. be it's fun weird. beer should be fun and now uh, banks are fun and financial institutions are are fun or at least funnier or more relevant than beers are, more entertaining. Yes, and technology plays a, um, a great part because you you all uh, mentioned technology from uh, different angles today. And technology may make banks easier to be approached, um, actually create opportunity for, uh, creates opportunity for uh, solutions. But we need to go, one advice, we need to go deeper and address problems that are maybe more specific than easiness. We all like to move. But this is the big shift right now, isn't it? That uh, banks are less banks and they're, they're more technology companies yes. in, a, in a way, or at least 
every, everybody's trying to, even if they're not doing it, they're trying to look like a technology company and yeah. you can understand why obviously they want to do this in front of their consumers. They also get, you know, if they're on the stock market, they have the um, technology company multiplicator. So, you know, they, it helps them, uh, you know, worth more. Um, but they're not banks like we used to yes. think of banks. Yeah. And, yeah. But in the same time, because this, uh, they are shifting. Uh, and people, especially in Romania, they do have a trust issue, especially with the financial system. How can advertising and communication and the strategy behind the advertising can help banks regain their trust and regain their trust in this changing environment when they are promoting themselves as solution makers with technology? I think. I think trust is a, and honesty is a very good realm where, where we can play. It's usually whenever you are untrustworthy in the future, you like, how can I be more trustworthy? You do something good. And traditionally, a lot of banks were investing in CSR programs, which are now the new ESG programs, which is the, the, the new and the revolutionized way to look at CSR. You're doing something for the society, but it's not just uh, paying back to the society. You're, uh, it's, it's about environment, uh, social, and governance issues. And you have to do it while putting your business at the core of the problem. And I think that's the difference between CSR and ESG, because with ESG, it has to, whatever you do for society, it has to come from an honest place. And when I'm saying an honest place, that means it has to come from your business. It has to make sense for your business. So. You want to earn trust, and you're, a, I don't know, a financial entity. And you're thinking, okay, uh, maybe if I save dolphins, uh, people are going to, you know, think I'm a better person. But for how long are you going to save dolphins if that's not part of your core business? That's obviously dishonest. Uh, I totally agree, and what I liked what you you said uh, while we were outside that. Uh, Actually, we, we are collecting a lot of data from consumers, and uh, that's something that we, we use when we are doing business with, uh, with our consumers, understanding them better, upgrading them, finding new solutions for them. What is very interesting, what they get out of it, and to make it tangible, what they get out of it. Uh, this is what I like, because this is, uh, I'm repeating what, uh, what Cosino was saying, uh, because I, I found it very valuable. Uh, financial advisory, uh, combined with data power that can bring people personalized advice and that is very valuable. That can become very valuable if it's done honestly and not just to, again, to upsell or I, I'm already having an agenda. So trust is something that I genuinely, comes if I genuinely want to add value to your life. If I genuinely, uh, and not, Okay, one by one, person by, by person, and also as a, as, at a society level. Because as bank, we have the responsibility to start talking about money more openly, to open up the subject, because it's in our interest to talk about money, and people feel comfortable and confident talking about money. This is something that I think it's on the verge of uh, of becoming uh, more and more uh, the topic in uh, these kinds of uh, rooms. Um, because this taboo needs to go away. It doesn't do us good. We, do, we, are, uh, we don't talk openly in our families about money, about how much we earn, how, how do we spend it, how can we spend it more wisely, how do we actually save in different ways, how can, can we invest. So uh, having a financial advisor is Actually, it's not for rich people. It's for it's for people that need to build financial health. Yeah, definitely. You know, it's it's uh, important if you if you have a lot of money, <laughs> but it's like you said, it's it's crucial if you don't have a lot, uh, a lot of money. And if like to answer your question, because you were talking about if brands can can there be trust in in financial institutions and. 
I think yes, as long as they're honest to their business, to their core business, and whatever they do for society proves to be sustainable because it's part of their business. So yeah, they openly make money by, I don't know, doing financial education or financial inclusion or you know, investing in the environment, so on and so forth. If they talk openly, like you said, if there are no taboo subjects and if they provoke hard, hard conversations, and also on how they deal with data. They're obviously, they, they collect data, and that's great. With the, you've been talking a lot about tech and collecting data. Uh, the question is like what you give back to the community for, uh, for getting that data, because you know, uh, you, know, you know that the transactions, you know where the money moves, how the money moves, obviously, you know, with anonymized transactions, but you have a lot of knowledge. So if you can help people, I don't know, move to a better place with that data, yeah. get a better job with that data. If you can consult them using that data, you offer them added value for the data that you're, you're taking away from them. In the same time, the audience are changing. So uh, did banks tackle the younger audiences because they don't watch commercial, they are on TikTok, mm -hmm. they are on Instagram, mm -hmm. they are on social media. How did banks do advertising in this in this area I think what they do well or better than others uh, is um, the the effort they put behind the content that uh, is meant to educate and raise the level of conversation about uh, money but there is a lot to be done in other uh, touch points that are uh, still being, uh, let's say, left out or uh, underrepresented. As you said, TikTok is uh, a platform that uh, brings us uh, together in a very different way with different rules, where actually a lot of serious topics are being addressed already. If uh, if the health uh, industry is thriving in TikTok, I think banking can. Uh, do it as well. Uh, so, um, yeah, there are a lot of corners that are uh, being left out because we are uh, somehow um, building uh, our reach in a traditional, still in a traditional way, and we are afraid to experiment. But um, what I'm watching uh, right now. Um, uh, as a model, and I think uh, a lot of uh, communication people should do more with their agency partners, it's the model of go and grow. So start something small, start, don't risk everything on a topic, but if you feel it's valuable, put it out there and, and see how it travels, and then grow it. If it travels in the right direction, grow it. Make it a thing, make it your own. So I think this is uh, the way we should navigate things that scare us. We shouldn't uh, go full blown on TikTok. Maybe we shouldn't, actually. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that. But test, test places that allow conversation to happen. Because this is where you are going to, to learn more than in any research and any segmentation. Yeah, definitely, definitely uh, test more. I think one of the good things that I see with banks going on TikTok and for the you know the good cases the success cases is that they're not desperately trying to be cool like uh, you see with, yeah you see with a lot of I don't know FMCG brands or I don't know like uh, chips and soft drinks and so on they, they they twist their cap and they like hey guys do you skate we skate as well we like that and because banks have a um, maybe had they have a more boring ancestry, you know, mm -hmm. heritage. They didn't want to, they, they just adapted their message. Mm -hmm. And by doing this, they, they stayed true to their core. So whenever they did financial education, for instance, with, you know, really young people, um, they did it, they just adapted the message. They, they translated the message very well for the platform. If it was social media, great, then it was social media. But they, they did it for also for the, for the age group without making it seem like, you know, we're not bankers, we're not in the financial. No, we, we come from that space. It's just that we're making the message relevant for you. And they didn't try it desperately to be cool, which is obviously cringe. Another thing that uh, that I find interest, interesting is that um, this uh, um, the Gen Z and even uh, the millennial I think started uh, this uh, making money out of their uh, starting making money younger, 
out of their hobbies. I think this is something where we need to be as banks. We need to help them navigate this because it's not easy. Making money early, it's actually can become a stressful thing because you don't know how to handle it. Uh, we don't have financial education in schools, so uh, w this is a gap that we can uh, we can totally fill and actually be cool with it uh, and become a become a cool brand because uh, we offer uh, utility right where it's needed. So this trend of uh, turning uh, turning your hobbies into money is not going to die. Actually, it's uh, it's expanding more and more. Uh, and uh, as you know, the, the financial system is heavily regulated. In the same time, they do have to have uh, cool messages for youngsters, to have uh, financial education, to deliver their messages with the uh, ESG. How can have creative messages while compliant with the regulations and tell the stories that they want to tell in a Truthfully, manner. I wouldn't say. I wouldn't say like to be. I wouldn't say cool necessarily because we like. I know oh, what creative. you mean. I know what you creative. mean. Yeah, I think relevant is maybe a maybe a better word. And it's by tackling. I think it's it's definitely obviously complying with the regulations. But I think what's important is to tackle something that you know is really burning for them is really like almost uh, i don't know like an, an you know an unspoken topic for instance and i don't know for instance why we don't touch subjects like uh, if you look at nowadays of you know what what the young generation gen z is if you look at their media for instance it's all about money it's money money yeah. money sh money show off you see mm -hmm. like the brands they're wearing mm -hmm. what they buy what they mm -hmm. now like we've heard of cases where kids were being shamed because they didn't have designer shoes, they did, they 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 weren't uh, you know uh, wearing designer clothes or designer shoes, and that's something. Uh, if you look at that, it's very unhealthy from yeah. a financial point of view. And if a brand such as you know like uh, any financial brand that has gravitas and comes from comes with the background, I know how to deal mo with money yeah, better I, than you guys. You yeah, know, we will help you navigate this, and I think it's. This is the way you can actually go. It's a free idea. Take it. Um, this is how you can navigate TikTok. If you want to be useful, take TikTok. There are a lot of people making money out of TikTok. Be the brand that helps da navigate those people that make money out of TikTok. So find yourself being useful on platforms, not just use platforms of media. medium. Maybe that would be a better approach when you go there. Because we are out of time, I want to uh, to go to the to the end and ask you, what are the challenges in having relevant and creative advertising? I think um, the challenges come from uh, not getting lost in, uh, um, let's say, objectives that are very top level and not being able to translate them and narrow them down into how can I be useful and how can I be useful in different places that will add up to meet my objectives. I think this is where, it, for me as a planner at least, this is where we get lost in translating the, the big things that we want to achieve into tasks that are uh, energizing the creatives uh, with meaning, with stories, with uh, real people that we are addressing and talking to. Yeah, um, and I think besides that, I think finding the right problems, because a lot of time we're not addressing the right problems, is that when we're when we become irrelevant because we're not addressing the right problems or we address a problem that has already been addressed. And I think finding the right problems, obviously, we can't solve any problem because that's also a challenge when you have a really, really good problem, but there's no way your brand can fix that problem. But finding the right problems and uh, we're lucky to, you know, be in this area in Central and Eastern Europe where we have a lot of problems to to fix. So, um, um, yeah, I think that for me, that's the biggest challenge to find the right problem and to and yeah, to match it with what you do. Thank you. And to wrap it up, because we are the last uh, people standing in front of, of lunch, uh, 
can love can banks become love brands? Yeah, definitely. Certainly. Because because I don't know any. Money money is life. It's actually something so intertwined with uh, our life. So that's where banks should take their uh, their energy from and another thing it, the energy comes also f and it's seen also in the category because if you look of how i was looking um, at how uh, many payment methods there are mm -hmm. so it, only payment how many pa so it's so uh, great to see a category being so alive being energized by, te by technology people will will take you home will change their habits if you talk to them in eye to eye. So I think there is a lot of room for, uh, for brand love. Definitely, you would, uh, banks can change your life. Uh, a good account can change your life. And you know, just being a bit more trivial than this, I've seen people look at their mobile banking app and say like, I just hate the new update. And I've seen them saying, I love what they did with this. And so yeah, but, yeah, but they say I, lo I love what they do, but they don't say I, oh I love this brand. Like I, we don't see people standing in line for for <laughs> getting uh, getting a card or a, or a mortgage. Hey, maybe it's harder to say. Maybe it's like you know telling your you know when you rarely say you know your mom that you love her. Yeah, and I think um, yeah, it's true. It's a difficult mission because the choice is very diversified and uh, we see that people have in their wallets yeah. actually uh, a lot of <laughs> mixed relationship <laughs> with banks so we it's hard to i think it's hard to create loyalty but i think we can create feelings that are closer to love so uh, i i i don't think we should aim for absolute loyalty because mm -hmm. that that is insane nobody that is, is not love that is not exactly. love that yeah. is not love uh, actually that is trapped uh, so we shouldn't look for uh, for that but we should look for being more relevant being more entertaining me being more human with with them don't act like institution because bad news is that the trust in institution these days it's at a historical low so don't behave like an institution if you want brand love behave like people yeah and and with this message i love this message do, do we have any questions if we don't have questions guys thank you so much for coming thank you. Thank you. here